hypothesis test for the mean of a normal distribution. Well, we looked previously at normal distributions. And the way we denote a variable x having a normal distribution is as follows. So I've drawn x squiggle n there. That means x has a normal distribution. And here, mean mu and the variance, sigma squared, where sigma is the standard deviation, sigma squared is the variance. Now let's say we took a sample of n different elements of a normal distribution. So we took from a normal distribution n different elements and found the mean. If we did this loads of times, the mean x bar will also have a normal distribution with the same mean. However, the variance, because we've divided by n, and what I'm saying here is not strictly mathematically true, but it's a good way of remembering it. Since we've divided everything by n when we're finding the mean, the variance is going to be less because all the items in the distribution are factor n closer together. We've divided everything by n, so we're expecting the variance to change accordingly. Again, what I've said, if you do further maths, isn't strictly mathematically true, but it's a good way of remembering that when we divide by n, i.e. when we find the mean, that it decreases the variance by factor n, as we've shown there. So now let's apply this to an exam question. So it says, Mary buys flour in bags which are labelled as containing 5 kilograms. She suspects that the average content of these bags may be less than 5 kilograms. In order to test this, she selects a random sample of 8 bags and weighs their contents, assuming that the weights are normally distributed with standard deviation 0 0.0072 kilograms, carry out a test at the 5% level, given that the weights of the 8 kilogram bags are as follows. So in order to structure properly a hypothesis test, you should have a look at our binomial hypothesis test videos, because these hypothesis tests follow pretty much the same structure. So the first thing we should do is define in words the parameter that we're testing, and here we're testing the mean of the normal distribution. The letter we use to represent the mean is mu. So mu, in words, is the mean weight of the population of bags of flour. And that word population is quite important because what we're doing, we're taking a small sample that we're going to test here to try and deduce features of the population, i.e. whether or not the mean weight of the population of flower bags is less than 5. Okay, so H0, the null hypothesis, we'll take that word for it and we'll say that the mean is 5. The alternate hypothesis, she suspects that the bags may be less than 5 kilograms in weight on average, so mu is less than 5. And so far we've gained 3 marks for that, 1, 2, Three. Now the number of marks you get for this may differ from exam board to exam board, however the principle of having to write all this is still there. This is an ideal exam mark scheme perfect answer. So if you write this you can't lose any marks. So the information I've used so far to write down what I have written down, label is containing 5 kilograms, that's the null hypothesis. She suspects it may be less than 5 kilograms and we've defined mu in words. The next bit of information we're given is that she selects a random sample of eight bags and weighs their contents. Assuming the weights are normally distributed with standard deviation of 0 0.0072, let's get that information down as well. So X, which is the weight of a flower bag, has a normal distribution. We expect it to have mean five. We assume that the null hypothesis is true. And the standard deviation is 0 0.0072, therefore the variance, and this is important, is the standard deviation squared. Quite often in the exam questions, they'll try and catch you out like this. Right, so we've got that information down. However, we're testing the mean of the distribution. This here is the value of a bag of flour, the value of a weight of a bag of flour. We actually need the mean of it, and that's where our original fact about the mean of a normal distribution, having that distribution there comes in. So x bar, the mean weight of a bag of flour, has a normal distribution. Again, the mean is 5. However, now the variance is 0 0.0072 squared. 
but the sample size was eight. So that's the distribution we're, we're testing now. Okay, so we're gonna carry out the test using this distribution. So the first thing we need to do is work out the sample mean that we're testing. So we've got this sample here. We need to actually work out its mean in order to test it. So let's add them all together, divide by how many there are. So 4.992 plus 4.981. We can actually use the statistics mode for this as well, but it's a bit wasteful too. 5.006 plus 4.982 plus 4.996 plus 5.009. Plus 4.991 plus 5.003 over, no eight of them, is that there? So x bar is 4.995. So x bar, our test value, is 4.995. Now that there is also worth a mark. So we've got four marks so far. So now, now carrying out the hypothesis test. So a quick diagram to actually explain the test that we're carrying out. So there's our normal distribution with mean five. That's what we'd assume to be true. So we're assuming mu is five. And we're saying if mu truly is five, how likely were we to have got that mean there, a mean as low as 4.995? Obviously that suggests that the means decreased but is it enough evidence to say with 95% confidence that the mean's decreased? Because we've set ourselves the tall order of being 95% sure or 5% unsure before we have the confidence to make any rejection. So we're testing for a decrease. So that basically means that anything in the bottom 5% of the normal distribution here gets rejected. 5% reject. And we want to see where 4.995 lies in relation to this. So 4.995, very similar method to our binomial hypothesis test. So the way to see whether 4.995 lies in the rejection region is to see how much probability lies to the left of 4.995. If it was a right tail test, we'd do the probability to the right of 4.995, however, we are testing to the left here. We're testing the left-hand tail. We're testing less than five. So in our calculator, let's put all the details in, see how much probability lies to the left of 4.995, our test value. So normal distribution, normal cumulative distribution. The lower bound is negative infinity. Testing how much probability lies to the left of something. There's no lower bound. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna simulate infinity by putting in the calculator the biggest negative number that it can deal with, minus 10 to the power of 99. The upper bound, 4.995. The standard deviation, it's the square root of the variance. So in this case, the square root of 0 0.0072 squared divided by eight, the common mistake here is to close the bracket before having divided by 8. Notice that in the calculator here, divide by the sample size first, then close the bracket. And the mean, well, we assume the null hypothesis is true, and put 5 in there. So what we worked out here is the probability that x bar is less than or equal to 4.995. So the probability that x bar is less than or equal to 4.995. Now usually there's no marks to be lost for not writing the bar, but you really should write it to be correct. We're testing the mean here, so we're testing the distribution of the mean, i.e. the standard deviation or the variance is 0 0.0072 squared over 8. So it's x bar that we're calculating for just to be correct, okay? So, 0 0.02475.
equals 0 0.02475. So now, what we can do is see where on this sliding scale it lies. So the bottom 5%, we reject, and we see that to the left of, no, uh, of 4.995 is 0 0.02475 probability. So it lies around about there in the rejection region. So there's two marks for having calculated that, one for recognising that we'll calculate, one for writing it down, and one for actually doing it. So now, make a comparison to our significance level, 0.02475 is less than our significance level, 0.05, that's a mark reject H0 that's a mark and then finally an in context conclusion so we've got sufficient evidence to suggest the mean weight of a bag of flour is less than five kilograms and that's all nine of the marks so if you want a step-by-step -step set of instructions have a look at our binomial hypothesis testing video as in there we set out all the steps needed to do a good hypothesis test we've followed all the steps here but it might help to see them all laid out like that. So for more videos like this, go to alevelmathsrevision.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel.